Hi, and welcome to today's daily response video. I'm Zara, creative producer for People Make It Work, and today I am joined by our associate, Jenny Stewart. Hi, Jenny. Hi, how's it going? All right, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. It's not currently raining, so it's possible. Yeah, we've had some bright sunshine for a few days. <laughs> um, you are over in Ireland, right? Yes, I'm in the wide west of Donegal, as north and west as you can get. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's good not to be talking to donkeys. <laughs> um, so, Jenny, you have had experience with, um, you know, working for organisations like Avalon and the Royal Museums of Greenwich and the Design Museum, and that was in like an in-house setting, but you've also freelanced for like Battersea Art Centre and the V&A and Peckham Platforms. Can you tell us a little bit more about now in your freelance capacity, what do you do um, and kind of where, are you, where your key specialisms are? Yeah, um, I mean, I think the way I think about it is that I help like people and organizations because I do work with organizations, but I also, I work with architectural practices. I work with festivals. So like a, a, like a huge range of like also sizes of organization. And um, so I, I help them think about uh, who they are and what they do and also help them to talk to their audiences about that. And sometimes that audience is a potential visitor or it might be a funder or it might be a client. Um, and like, I think it's a process of getting to know and understand each other. And, and sometimes it looks like me helping them find the words for a tweet or their website. Sometimes it's like a really deep conversation about why they do what they do. And sometimes it's saying like that photo is really great and that one's terrible. <laughs> okay. And, um, if we delve into this current time mm -hmm. in our lives, you know, a good 12, I think we're in like week 12, um, with so much that has happened and a very critical time. With your comms knowledge and perspective, could you tell us a bit about where your thinking has been and, um, you know, with relevance to your work and how you're now looking forward with that light? Yeah, I mean, I know these talks are um, focused and were initially focused around COVID, but as a communicator, it would feel really weird to not talk about Black Lives Matter at this point as well. Mm -hmm. And as we kind of come out of lockdown and we're in the middle of, of this stage of that movement, you know, it really feels like this, in terms of comms like bookended <laughs> these past couple of months. And it's, it's really made me think about the, the, the kind of extreme breadth of comms, which goes from the really practical to the, to like getting to the real core of narrative and who you are and what your identity is. Because when everything was shutting down, you know, we had to be practical and we had to be clear with people and we had to say like, we're closing or we're not closing and look after staff and all that stuff. And now when our buildings are closed and we're, we're not doing things person to person at this Black Lives Matter moment when being silent isn't really an option anymore. All we've had is comms to, to be supportive, to say how we feel as organizations. And, and it feels like everything is being mediated through comms at the moment, whether that's your website or your social media. So, I mean, obviously I'm a comms person, so I always think it's important, but it, for me, it's really demonstrated how central what we do as comms professionals is to like everything that organizations are. Mm. And are you able to highlight, you know, what you've seen, what what practices are working, or what you've been impressed by? Um, I've been impressed by people taking a stand and being vulnerable, or or being being ready to get it wrong. You know, I, one of the things that I became quite frustrated with when I was working in house and, and also later was sometimes as a comm person you get really good at keeping your organization out of trouble about you know making a PR statement that is just just bland enough that it won't really get picked up anywhere um, and what I really like is that I think in the cultural sector we're willing to have a bit more personality and we're willing to put ourselves out there a bit more and to maybe get things wrong and take it on the chin and say we were wrong and, and move on from that. And I think that's really important if things are, are gonna change. And I mean, I think that's another thing that I've been thinking about a lot, which is kind of 
looking at comms through a dimension of ethics instead of what we can get away with or what we're trying to sell. We're not trying to get people to come to an exhibition um, or sign up to a program as much anymore, but we have these incredibly powerful platforms. And I think I've seen people really think about what their responsibility is to, to use those platforms. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think looking at that ethical dimension instead of seeing comms as just a tool for selling and seeing it as a thing that's just, you know, really core in connecting with people. Yeah. Can you give us a bit more advice around, you know, when you're a comms representative for an organisation, that is a massive responsibility. Mm. Um, and obviously you're a much larger voice than just <laughs> your own voice and what you're bringing to. So kind of actions or thinking or support around, you know, how to hold that voice um, within an organisation. Mm -hmm. I think that could be really useful. Yeah, I think sometimes being in comms gives you license to ask uncomfortable questions because you're empowered to say like, we're gonna get asked this. And it's your job to ask the difficult questions before you get asked them by the outside world. And so that's often how I, mm. you know, insert myself into that space of, you know, I think of it a little bit as leading from the press office which is you say, once this goes public, here's what people are going to say. You know, they're going to say, why is your board not more diverse? You know, they're going to say, you know, what are you doing for your, you know, staff or people of color? And, and so I think that's the way into it is not framing it as being your questions, but framing it as being the world's questions. Mm. And as we approach comms and strategizing, are there some actions that you can give us um, to consider? Yeah, I think the first one would be to engage with comms as a listening process um, as, as much as or more than a talking process. Um, and it's also important not to just listen to the people that are talking to you, but also to listen to people that aren't talking to you. Um, and I really think you can draw on the comms professionals in your organization to do that because they're usually quite plugged into different networks and different voices. So try and create a way that you can be pulling in information as much as you're putting out your own messages and to be, to be porous and to, and to try and get out of your own way a little bit. Um, I, th I think that's really important. And, and in doing that, to think about, you know, and I think this, this really came to light around Black Lives Matter, which is when, when we say we as an organization, like who is that we? What kind of organization are we speaking of? Are we, frankly, assuming that we're a white organization? And who's the audience that we're talking to? Um, are we assuming the same thing of them? Do you maybe alienate people by the way you use the words we and you? And, and to kind of open up that voice a bit more. Um, I think I always tell people that um, comms is like organizational therapy. It's really important whenever uh, something that's been an idea or a program that's being talked about, but suddenly you've got to put it into words in black and white, it brings out loads of issues. And I, I think we've all experienced that, you know, someone's really fighting over a word in their quote. And it's not because they really love that word. It's, it's a reflection of how they feel about like how they're being treated and how their expertise is being valued. And I think we should just recognize that that's just the truth. Like that calm stuff is hard and you need to embed it in your, in your strategy and in your development when you're developing things as an organization. Maybe do it at the start rather than at the end when you need a press release. Like give it time and space to breathe because it's a really useful way of like working out different priorities and the balance of power. Yeah. Um, and then I think the third one is, <sighs> I think that in the cultural sector, we should be confident in our expertise, even when we're feeling uncertain. You know, the truth is, it's been a really challenging time, challenging in different ways for all of us. Um, but I think, and sometimes, you know, if you told me at the beginning of all this, that the whole country was gonna shut down, and essentially no one would tell us what to say or what to do about that as cultural organizations or in the creative sector, like we just had to find our way. And um, you know what, we did find the words. And I think we did some really great work. And I think we should be proud of that. And we should take a little bit of that spirit um, forward. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got um, number one, open up the listening and really look around, see what others are doing. Mm -hmm. 
the number two looking at comms as therapy and looking at as a process for the organization to ask the sticky questions um, to work through that together and three like be confident um, and be be secure in in the fact that a lot of what we've seen within the cultural sector has actually been really strong in their response at a time of a lot of unknowns and a lot of uncertainty for sure yeah. jenny i have loved speaking to you this afternoon thank you so oh, much for thank you insight. it's been very nice to put all my amorphous thoughts into some <laughs> hopefully uh, clear points <laughs> thank you so much and hope to catch up with you soon definitely cheers <laughs>